Hey guys, I'm Eric Ani with Mechanical Hub. I've got Andy, of course, with us. Andy Mickelson, yep. thank you for joining us. Scott Cohen from Ream. Uh, we're at AHR 2025. If you haven't seen our other videos here on YouTube, please check them out. This is the Proterra hybrid electric heat pump water heater, right? Correct. Andy, you, you and I have installed plenty of heat pump water heaters right. so far. What are you looking at? So, you know, as we just start talking about this, what are you thinking as you're looking at it? I keep putting my hand right here as we've been standing here talking. And that's that's kind of a new thing for me, you know, seeing the side, the side connections, connections on water, on so tank water heaters. side and top connections on a tank water heater. That's for flexibility reasons, sometimes, especially like in a heat pump application, I may not have room up here because this tank grew a little bit. Well, but but the new, the top connections are new for your model, right? Right. right. So this is, Reem's been in the heat pump water heater business for 15 years. This is our fifth gen, this is an update to our fifth generation heat pump water heater. At the request of plumbers who wanted the top connections, we've added the top connections because when you're doing a tank replacement, a lot of times the connections are already there on the top. All the plumbing is done, but we kept the side connections for the flexibility, as you mentioned, when you need the space or you don't have that top clearance. Yep. I like that they're all brass too, your standard dielectric nipples on the top here. Uh, but new new for heat pumps is that top connection. Yep. That's pretty nice. I think being in a market where we're doing a lot of, or everybody's house has a basement, the top connections for us are typically more useful. Right. Simply because that's where our plumbing has started, mm -hmm. right? We're not coming out of a wall or setting this out in the garage where a lot of times the plumbing's coming out of the wall, right? Right. We heard that from plumbers after, you know, based on previous models. The other thing that we added on this one is the duct ready design. So previous models have required a duct adapter. Okay. Adds a little extra cost and adds a little extra space, which can make things a little more tricky on the install. This one, these tabs just flip out. You can, you can screw your duct right into there and it just saves time avoids space. the accessory, yeah. saves a little space on the ducting. Well, as guys that have to order the parts, I like the idea that I don't have to worry about one more thing. Right. I got to keep in stock or get out to the job for the install. That's Absolutely. nice. Yeah, just, I mean, that's not having to go back and be like, oh, do you, does my wholesaler have that? Yeah, yeah I can get the tank, but right. I can't get the adapter. Oh, okay, now what? Yeah, exactly. That's that's nice that's, as a contractor standpoint. Yeah. So multiple modes of operation, obviously. With any heat pump, you've got the heat pump only mode. That's like the most savings we're going to have in operation, right? Right. Where does it go from with, with the Proterra? Where does it go after heat pump only? Sure. There's a heat pump only mode. Again, that is the most energy efficient. This one, this model has a 4.07 UEF. It's the highest of the heat pumps. That means it's going to be four times as efficient as a standard electric tank. This one will save $576 on average on your electrical utility costs related to water heating compared to a standard electric immersion resistance uh, water heater. Um, you have heat pump only mode. If you can run heat pump only mode all the time, you're gonna get the maximum savings. We've got a um, high, de high demand mode which will run the heat pump and the resistance elements at the same time. You've got an energy saver mode that will use an algorithm to optimize the performance and the energy savings, run the heat pump as much as it can. But if you really tax the, uh, the system and use up a lot of the hot water, it'll kick on the elements to recover a little faster. You've got electric only mode for Essentially for if there's ever a problem with the heat pump, you can go into electric only mode. It'll prevent you from being without hot water while you get that service. And then it's got vacation mode, which is exactly what we all know about vacation mode. It just keeps it on and standby so that you can use the app to, to reactivate it and, and turn it back on remotely. So app connectivity, what are your thoughts when you hear that and you're talking about a residential water heater? Well, I, I think, you know, over the overall from my customers, we've been seeing a shift to, you know, where everybody wanted an app and then there was a period of time where nobody wanted an app and now everybody's kind of going back. I see a lot of people moving back to that position that we understand what the value of this app is. I think that the value is, mode yeah. is, is big. I think the values changed though. I think, yeah. I think you as manufacturers have come in and given more usable functionality within the app. So like I can see right. the vacation mode immediately. As somebody, we do a lot of traveling, you know, whether it's for work or for fun, and I'll be sitting on the plane or landing in my new city and it'll be, oh, I'm making hot water for no reason, right? No right? Reason. And so 
for years I've been able to connect to my system at home and just turn it off because nobody's there. Why the heck do I need to run it, right? Yep. Sure. Your research doesn't need to run, all kinds of right. things that you can do to save energy. In the app, you can control the temperature. Most people don't really worry kind of about changing a few, yep. a few degrees here and there. One of the cool features is the scheduling feature, especially if you live in a place with peak energy pricing. So you can schedule this to run to a higher temperature at a, at a low energy price time overnight, for example, right? Then in the morning, you can set it back. Okay. You stored all that energy. You can basically deplete the tank with those morning showers, and then you can recover again at a low energy usage time. So it can uh, really help to uh, even more manage your energy costs. That'd so. make a ton of sense with like a thermostatic mixing valve, elevate the tank temp. Yeah. So you can take advantage of the lower kil per kilowatt rate. Uh, you were gonna say something? I was gonna say something. So something uh, a lot of our contractors wanna know, anytime they're doing a retrofit, we mentioned it's 240 volt. What do, do, they, does, do our contractors need to do anything different with their existing electric water heater power when we go to retrofit into a heat pump? There's no difference in the, on the electrical side. The only difference on the plumbing side is this is a heat pump, so it's gonna create condensate, non-acidic condensate. Yeah, right. And yeah, so just, that yeah. comes right out of here, and you would use PVC and pipe that either to a floor drain, condensate pump, or at, if you're in a warm weather place and you've got to, you, go you can just penetrate the side and go to an outside drain. One last thing before we finish up, I think we've covered like the features and benefits. Yeah. We've got heat pump uh, only mode, you've got heat pump and electric resistance mode, you've got a lot of programming available either through the app or just in the vacation mode. So you do have a couple heating, 4,500 watt heating elements, standard heating elements, uh, you're going to find in any of your tanks. So we're familiar with that. I think it's just good information, just kind of recap um, for anybody that's just still trying to learn about heat pump water heaters. They're becoming more and more popular in a couple of years. That's all we're going to be able to put in if it's over 30 gallons. That's 35. a 35 gallons. So that's a that's a big detail right there. While you're watching this video, think about why we're making, why we're talking about this, why you guys are investing millions of dollars into this technology, and they keep getting better and better because right. eventually that's all we're going to be able to have in those you know normal installations. I don't know anyone that lives in a house that has a 35 or smaller gallon water heater, unless it's tankless. I'm just gonna say that right now. Right. But I wanna do all that recap. I wanna walk around to the backside because anybody that watches my videos, follows me over on social media, I'm, you and I are yeah. talking about all the time. Cutaways, guys, and this thing has one, so we're gonna look at it. All right, Scott, so I love a cutaway. My audience knows that. Andy, it's so yep. cool to be able to see all of this. A couple of things when you see a heat pump water heater, kind of wondering what's going on underneath the hood because you're not going to get one out in the field that's going to have this nice see-through. You've got the heat exchanger here. So what's happening with what, what's going on, how we're making this hot water, guys, is the compressor and the coil and the heat pump on top of the water heater is compressing that refrigerant. It gets really super hot, right? And then right. it's being pushed through this coil that heat, tra that hot refrigerant, the heat in it is being transferred into the water because the water's colder. Am I getting right. that right? Explain yeah, basically. It? Yeah. yeah, so I think it's just really cool to see that. What are you thinking when you look at this cutaway? I think the, you know, one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't understand is that this coil, it's not submerged in the water. We don't have any chance of contamination of water with high pressure refrigerants or anything like that. We don't have to deal with any refrigerants at all on this. Right, so we're what well, we just learned that this is a 134A model. Correct. Um, but as the installer, even as a service tech, you're not ever going to open this refrigerant system. Right. It's critical charge. It's a sealed system. Right. Not intended to be serviced by a, by a plumber or really by anyone. Okay. And as part of the war, as part of the 10-year warranty, if the if the heat pump was ever to fail, we'll replace the entire unit. And we were never going to ask a plumber to, to get in the top of this unit and try to service the heat pump. But that's actually something good and worthwhile in this video, I think. Now, we're not anticipating these things to be replaced within right. that warranty period, but it is a full replacement. And it comes up in the comments all the time, and it just should be acknowledged. Like, look, guys, uh, any other tank water heater after that 10-year mark, let's just, let's as a contractor, I'm making suggestion to my customer right. for their best investment, the re best return on their dollars to replace those older tanks anyway. So of course we expect this to last, we, everybody wants everything to last forever, right? right? But you put a 10 year warranty on a tank water heater, that's significant. 
And so this is a good return kind of on that initial investment right. for the install. I think it's great. I think one other thing that a good way to think about this for a plumber or homeowner is if you're replacing a tank today and you replace it with a standard electric tank, you're locking yourself in for 10 more years on average on those higher electric costs. And it is, it is, it is a, this is a good product. It is tested. This is our fifth generation, as I mentioned. We're the leader in the market. It's a, it's a unit you can rely on. And, um, you know, in addition to, yes, there's going to be a higher upfront cost, but there are a lot of incentives in the market today to bring that cost down for homeowners. There's, there's tax credits. For lower middle income people, there's tax rebates, there's rebates available, yeah. there's local utility rebates available. In some states, there's state-driven programs. So they're really, um, they're really putting a lot of incentives in place to encourage people to make the switch. Right. And uh, homeowners today can take advantage of all that and make it a lot, make it almost as most almost the same price as a tank, as an electric tank replacement. The only thing left to figure out for you guys all together, and we're going to close her out with this, figure out some kind of like gyroscope compressor situation in here so I can lay this flat in my van, for goodness sakes. <laughs> I will share that with the team, see if we can come up with it. Ain't ever going to happen. Point is, is, you can't lay these down in your, in your service vehicles. They do right. have to be transported upright. Not the end of the world, but these things are getting bigger and bigger. So when you get to that 80 gallon, well, that's something we didn't cover, guys. This is available in 40, 50. 65 and 80. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a lot of, that's a big it's a good range. swing. Most of yep. them are only available, I think it's 50 and 65 or maybe 50, 80 throughout right. the industry. You guys are, that's a big offering. Well, Scott, appreciate it, man. I thought this was a really cool conversation. Uh, you're very knowledgeable and it helped us out. Andy, great questions. Yep. What do you, any closing before we go so. here? Go sell a few. There you go, go sell yeah. a few. I'm gonna go try right. to sell a few right. guys. Scott, thanks. Guys, check out the rest of our AHR 2025 videos from Orlando on the Mechanical Hub YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.